My survivor experience was the coolest thing I could have asked for. It was very different than I initially expected, but I learned a lot the entire way. And I you know, learned about myself in addition to learning about the game. And I have no regrets at the end, although I would have liked to be able to play longer. I think I did everything in my power to play a great game, and I'm very proud of myself. I think that this game really made me grow up a lot. And for the first time, I was dealing with people who were almost trying to, it seemed like run a business and they were trying to, you know, they had this end goal and it was kind of a do or die situation, which was new to me. And so I was forced to grow up and not trust people as much. And not that that's a great thing, but I think it allowed me to be more realistic about when people want something very badly and everyone wants the million dollar prize, you know, people are going to be ruthless to get it. So I think in that sense, I went from, you know, a fairly sophisticated but somewhat, you know, green college student to more of an adult, which is pretty cool. There were a lot of good moments. Um, it was very good to really feel like I had established a phenomenally close alliance with Michael and Matt specifically, and then also Laura and Sherry. But that initial feeling of I'm in control with my alliance was incredibly satisfying, and to be able to know who was going to be going home or to have a pretty good idea of who was going to be going home and to be in that kind of control and to be able to strategize freely was really cool. Oh, I was ready to go. I was ready to go to the individual immunity. One of the most frustrating things for me was that the pre-merge challenges were all incredibly physical and so at my small frame there was very little that I could contribute to the challenges I felt and so I was really ready for individual immunity challenges where I'd be able to just use my strength and be able to show what I could do on my own um, but we never quite got there so that was disappointing. Survivor definitely has some similar aspects to my real life you know you're juggling a lot of information and you're trying to play up certain relationships and downplay other ones and you know being in school and being a racer you know I'm always balancing a lot of things and trying to make business deals and trying to make negotiations that will work out in my favor. So in that sense it was similar, but um, there were definitely some differences, you know. To not feel like you could trust very many people was very different in the game and to, you know, have to deal with the physical side of surviving, it definitely adds a different dimension that my real life doesn't have. So it's similar, but there are definitely differences. The game of Survivor is definitely very similar to a race, and I think the biggest similar factor is luck. You know, a lot of things have to go your way in a race, just as a lot of things have to go your way in Survivor. But you do have to also take initiative and take control. So there, I feel more comfortable in a racing situation than I did in the game of Survivor, but they share a lot of similarities. I think one of the biggest changes for my personality is not so much my outlook on life, but more, you know, the quirky little things that would bother me at home. I think I got very much used to, like, I really never liked being dirty. I would shower, shower several times a day and, you know, little things. I won't have, I won't be picky with food. I, all those little things, I might be a little more relaxed when I get home, which will be really weird because I'm a little compulsive and like, like to be in control. But the fact that I had to let that go a little bit for the game, I think people are definitely going to notice it when I get back. I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned is kind of a serious and maybe a little bit of a depressing lesson, but I've definitely learned that, you know, very few things are going to come in the way of people's, you know, mo motives and their motivations. And so when something very big is on the line, you have to be ruthless to get it in a way that I didn't necessarily think you might have to be. So for me going forward, trying to make it as a racer in a really, really concentrated male dominated sport, I'm going to have to be much more ruthless and, you know, aggressive in getting what I want. And so I think that's a really, really useful lesson for me to learn early on. I think the social aspect of the game is much harder than the actual survival uh, aspect of the game. I, I was easily, I easily adjusted to not having a lot of food. Not having a lot of water was really tough, but I got over my fear of the dark. I got over my fear of animals. You know, there were, there were rats in our beds, and like it freaked me out. But it wasn't a way something that would like really interfere with my game. Whereas a social game was definitely something where I was always on edge. So I think I rocked all the physical survival uh, aspects, and then you know I learned a lot from the social game. My experience on Survivor was the coolest, weirdest, most challenging, different experience that I ever could have asked for that definitely helped me grow as a person and you know, I'm very, very lucky to be part of this club of survivors and to know what everyone before me has gone through and to be able to share my story and know that I did the absolute best that I could and be incredibly proud of myself. I think that's very cool so early on in life.